Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Bitterness, according to medical doctor S.I. McMillan, is a killer. But it is not the person who gets the venom of that negative emotion who is hurt the most. It is the person in whose heart the bitterness is generated. When you repress your emotions, your stomach keeps score. You're the loser. Whether or not you have the right to be bitter and hurt is not the issue. The fact still exists that pent-up emotions gnaw like a cancer of your soul. Revenge does not eliminate the pain and the hurt, but forgiveness does. Yet forgiveness never comes easy. Take, for instance, the woman who wrote, I heard your talk on forgiveness, and you said that forgiveness is treating the person as if something had not happened. How about this? My son was brutally killed in a group home. I easily forgave the boy who did it. He wasn't responsible. But the officials who were supervising the home were negligent. I can't very well drop it as though it had not happened. Here was a situation where those who were responsible allowed alcohol to be used in a home for troubled young men. The resulting altercation cost the life of her son. When an official neglects civic or moral duty, personal forgiveness does not eliminate the obligation that exists under the law to society. Yet personal hatred and bitterness choke the very life of a soul. That mother asks, so how do we show forgiveness to those who do evil? Question. How do you learn forgiveness? Jesus, of course, gave us a model when he prayed for his executioners on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, he cried. Father, forgive them. Yes, you say, but I'm not Jesus. Maybe he could, but I can't. Months before, Jesus had taught the disciples to pray, Forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as some versions put it. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The disciples, like many of us, had been raised on a different brand of theology, the kind that loves those who loves them and treats the enemies in the same manner they are treated. Jesus advocated not only forgiving enemies, but actually loving them. No wonder the disciples were disturbed. As soon as he finished sharing the Lord's Prayer with them, Jesus began talking about forgiveness. He said, If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. Here are several guidelines that will help you eliminate bitterness and eventually learn to forgive. Guideline 1. Realize that when you forgive, you are following the example of Jesus Christ who forgave even on the cross. Guideline 2. Forgiveness is necessary in light of God's forgiveness. Forgive one another, wrote Paul, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Guideline 3. Forgiveness is first a matter of your will, then your emotions. You mentally decide to forgive before your heart will respond. Forgiveness is more than a feeling. It is a conscious decision of your will. Guideline 4. God will help you learn to forgive if you will ask for his help. Forgiveness never comes easy, but it is the only way you will ever free yourself from the bondage and the chains of hatred. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.